I had a question from a subscriber about timing of a blackout scene. So I thought I'd post this video about general timing of scenes in QLC+. So there are three ways to affect the timing in QLC+. The first way is when you create a lighting scene to assign a timing value to it. The second way is when you put any of your scenes into a queue list, then you can affect the timing, fade in and fade out individually. And you can actually do duration too if you want to create a sequence that loops. The third way is to use the uh, timing or dial widget, which is normally used for duration, but you can also use the dial widget to control fade in and fade out times. So I'm going to go over those three different ways to control the timing of a lighting scene, how long it takes to fade in and then fade out. So let's take a look at the first way. So when I create a function, or I go to my functions tab, here's where I create all my scenes. And in this case here, I have 10 different scenes, including a blackout scene, which would be actually be scene number 11 that I've created in here. And I would recommend that if you're going to do, uh, you're going to use blackouts or need blackouts, rather than using the blackout button that's available on the console, just create a blackout scene where you include all of the faders or all of the channels of your lighting fixtures and just set them to zero and then designate that as a blackout scene you, so that you know when that scene is brought up, it's going to drive all the faders down to zero. So let's take a look at, for example, scene one here. Scene one, I have my uh, first row of lights on here. I color these different ways just to uh, illustrate that there are different lights that are on. And if I take a look at, you can see this is dimmers one through 10. Another way of looking at them is this way. If I click on here, it shows my 10 dimmers and they're all up at full. Okay, but right now, if I click on the clock here, there is no timing for these. So I can assign a timing here. I can assign a fade in time. Let's say I decide three seconds. And down here, a fade out time of three seconds. So now, if I were to use this particular scene and attach it to a button, it would take three seconds for that lighting scene to fade in and three seconds for that lighting scene to fade out. Now, notice that I said attaching it to a button because that would be the case here. So if I go back to my scene one and it's set at three seconds here now, and I'll just save it to make sure it's saved. Go back to my virtual console. And I'll go live run mode here. If I click on scene one, it's going to take three seconds to fade in. Okay, so you can see how it took three seconds for those uh, blue lights to fade in. And if I click it again, it's going to take three seconds for them to fade out. So you can do that with any of the scenes. And in this case here, I have scenes one through ten assigned. Now you'll notice that scene two comes on immediately because it had no timing to it. So again, I'll go back to edit mode to my functions, go to scene two, bring that up, click on the clock, say three second fade in, three second fade out, that's done. By the way, anytime that you leave, remember just click up here so you're not on a scene because what happens is if I'm not in run mode, this lighting will be on as soon as I exit run mode because I've left these lights on when I was editing them in the functions menu. So it's always a great idea before you leave the functions tab to just click up here so that we don't have any lights that are actually on. The back to my virtual console. Now that I've changed scene two to be a three second fade in, we should see scene two fade in in three. And then of course, if I go to scene one, that's also set to be three. So it will cross fade in three seconds from scene two to scene one. So that's uh, the first way that you can affect the timing and if you're attaching scenes to buttons. The second way to affect timing is to put your scenes into a queue list. And when they go into the queue list, it will override the timing that you assigned back in the functions menu. 
So I'll take a look at my video for creating the queue list. I'll put a link to that down below. But basically, back in my functions tab, here's my main queue list. Here's my different scenes that I've put in. And I've done fade in and fade out per step. So I can do very, very individualized timing here. My whole time is uh, step duration is common. So I'm treating this like it would be a show. So when scene one comes in, it stays in until I hit the button to advance to scene two. But basically, I've created my queue list and put my scenes into the queue list here. Again, you can watch the video for how to create a queue list. And in here, I can adjust my timing. These timings here now will override. So, for example, scene two, I have it fading in in, in three seconds and fading out in two seconds. That will override the timing that I assigned scene two here with this clock, which was a fade in for three and a fade out for three. The queue list will automatically override any of those timings. And the queue list is more or less the standard way of doing theatrical timing. So if I go back to my virtual console and I start my queue list, you can see how you proceed through here. I'll click my start to get scene one up. And you can see that this fades in in three. Now I have this scene going out in three and the next scene coming in in three. I could use my buttons here to advance to the next scene. Now you'll notice that this is kind of a different, uh, just to illustrate this, I have scene two fading out in two seconds, but scene three coming in in four seconds. So you can do what we call a split fade also when you're in this queue list. So the scene two is going out in two, but it's taking four seconds for scene three to come up. And you'll notice that it changes, but it's taking longer for the other scene to come up. There wasn't much of a change there because a lot of the same lights stayed on. Now notice going to the blackout, scene three, I have a fade out in zero and the blackout's going to go happen in zero. So this is going to be a very, very quick blackout. And you can see the lights flash out there. I'm going to click stop. And remember the idiosyncrasies here, and I talk about this when you're doing a queue list. The first time you click stop, it stays where you were. So if you want to pick up from there in rehearsal, I can pick run again. It will bring in that Q4 uh, back in again, which was the blackout. And then I can just continue to proceed through the rest of my show. Okay. Normally then if you hit stop and you want to go back to the beginning of the queue list, make sure you click stop again and it will go back to the top of the queue list. The other option you do have with the queue list, if you're very, very old fashioned and you decide to display the crossfade bar over here, you can do crossfading like we used to do way back in the day of uh, theater. Uh, you do still need to do the start button here, but this is again a way to control how your scene's fading in, fading out. Notice now that I have scene one here, scene two here. So I'm going to manually, very slowly, move this crossfader. And you notice I'm actually controlling the speed of the fade until now I'm actually all the way into scene two. Now I'm going scene two to scene three, and I'm going to manually crossfade from there. And at any time before you reach scene three, you can always back up and return to scene two. Once I've gone all the way though, and the scene has jumped, once you see this bar jump, now I cannot proceed backwards here. The only way I can proceed backwards is to use the backup Q button by doing that. Then I can go backwards here. Now notice I'm on two going to three. So you can do manual crossfade if you wanted to in there too, besides running this using the timing values that you've input. The third way of affecting timing is to use the duration widget, but use it to control cue timing instead of duration. Uh, this might be handy if you're busking or doing a show live and you're not sure about durations or whatever. This is the duration widget here. I'm just going to click over here and insert the dial over here. Normally this is assigned to duration. So you can do a tap. So if you have a sequence running, you can affect the speed of the sequence. I can use this dial to increase the timing between steps of the sequence or decrease the timing between steps of the sequence. I can also use this to control fade in and fade out times. And I'll just show you that quickly. You know, if I go to run mode, you can see the tap button here in milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and hours, and 
you know you change things here by using the dial or by using the plus and clicking in fields go back to edit mode I'm just going to get rid of this and I'll show you what I've done here let me eliminate that widget all right but here's the widget I created and now in order for scenes to be used in this widget you have to include them in here so I have to go in and put in add these scenes to the widget and I think I have a video on that I'll try to include down below but what I've done here instead of using the duration factor to control I'm using the fade in factor and fade out factor factor means what I'm going to multiply here okay so I'm multiplying by one that's why they use the word factor then I go over to my presets and I created a zero second preset, a one second, two second, three second, four second, and five second preset. So if I click on my five second preset, five seconds times a factor of one gives me five seconds. So I'm using this to control my fade in and fade out times for the for these buttons up here. Again, remember, if you create a new scene, you need to add it to this list. So you would go plus. You would go over here and you need to add the scene. The scenes that have already been included in the widget are grayed out, but I do have some scenes such as my blackout scene that have not been included in the widget yet. I'm just going to click cancel. And then you go through here and you adjust your fade in factors to one. Normally they come up not sent, not sent, and the duration is at one. I change this by double clicking it. I change this to not sent. And the fade in factor if I click on here I change this to one and I did that for all the different scenes and said okay the other thing that I did I'm gonna double click to bring that back up the appearance of this normally I got rid of a lot of things I'm not showing the plus and minus buttons I'm not showing the dial I'm not showing the tap button I'm not showing the hours field or the minutes field or the milliseconds field I don't need the multiplier and I don't need the apply button so the only thing I'm really showing is this seconds field in here because that's all I want to do is change the uh, timing for some of these buttons so now if I utilize this and I click in a uh, click a setting of three seconds scenes one through ten have been included in that list that are being affected let me bring my monitor back up here so now if you watch here scene one will take three seconds to fade in or I can change it to zero and now scene two will take will come in in zero seconds notice now how this has changed but back in the functions page we had assigned a three second fade in and a three second fade out for scene two but here because I'm using this widget I actually changed the timing to zero seconds so this works really really well if you're busking or doing a live show you're not exactly sure of the timing, the fade ins and fade outs, you can on the fly affect fade ins and fade outs there. So I can, for example, go to five seconds for the next one, and scene five is going to fade in in five seconds. Scene six, I will say, and I'm going to change this to two seconds, it's going to cross fade from scene five to six in two seconds. Not much of a change, we had that come on. Let's see, let me go to zero seconds here, see something that's really evident. All right, like, so go, let's say going from scene seven, now I'll change this to scene three, or uh, three second fade rather, and click, and you can see it's real evident, the three second fade is evident, all right? Now, interestingly enough, the blackout is not included in this fade out, fade out, uh, fade in. But scene 10 is included. And remember now, this is a fade in, fade out time. That's the uh, only issue with this. I'm doing a fade in, fade out time. So I'm currently set at three seconds. So if I click blackout, uh, even though the blackout set at zero seconds, this is overriding it. This is going to take three seconds to fade out. If I click my blackout, it will take three seconds to fade out. If I wanted to do that differently, it would be very simple. Before I click my back blackout button, I just click the zero seconds button, and now, boom, out in zero seconds. So the person who had asked about the blackouts, again, I suggest just adding a blackout scene, 
and then you can add it as part of this fade in and fade out here if you wish to do that. Okay, so that is your three options as far as actually controlling the scenes. Now, something interesting, and I'll just show you this quickly. Let's say we set this at five seconds and I'm going to fade in scene one in five seconds. Remember how the first thing I had done here, I set scene, scene one to a three second fade in, three second fade out. When you start using this widget, it actually adjusts the timing for all of these scenes that have been included. So let me just give you an example here. I'm going to go to edit mode. All right, remember in this widget, I've included scenes 1 through 10 in here. If I go back, the last timing that I used here was 5 seconds. If I go back to my functions page, scene 1, look at this, 5 seconds, 5 seconds. How about scene 4? We hadn't even touched that one. 5 seconds, 5 seconds. So the widget has actually adjusted all 10 of my scenes to be five seconds. Any of these that I click on, if I click on the clock, you'll see that it comes up at five seconds, okay? Just be aware of that, that if you do start using that widget, it changes the timing of all of your scenes back here. So be careful. If you wanted to just use buttons with certain timing for certain scenes, once you start using this widget, it overrides and fills in the timing for these scenes for you. Anything that's included in the widget, scenes 1 through 10 are included, it's going to change that basic timing to 5 seconds. Now, that does not affect the queue list here. Um, let me go back to functions. Again, I remember to click somewhere so it's not on. So, for example, all right, the last thing I've done, I've got scene 1 being 5 seconds. If I use my queue list, the queue list overrides any timing that you're doing here or anything that you've put in. So it's going to be a three second fade in. One, two, three, and it is in. It actually shows you the timing down here on the bar. So queue list overrides everything, but you can use this to set up timing for you and that will override any functions that you've assigned when you created the scenes. Hopefully that makes sense for you.